Good morning, third graders. Today we would be in your big reading textbook, but since you don't have that, I brought it up on the screen for you today. Our story is called Earth, and we know that by looking at the title and looking at the picture on this first page of our story, there's going to be expository text. It's going to be nonfiction. We know that we're going to be learning something from this story. We also know that whenever we read nonfiction, if they're going to give us text features to help us out with our story, and that, that's some of the things that we're going to be looking at on your worksheet today too, we're going to identify some of those text features. Remember that text features can be pictures, they can be images, they can be charts and graphs, they can be headings and subheadings, they can be bold print, they can be captions. Text features are just things that will help us understand and comprehend what we're reading. Okay, so this story is called Earth, and it's written by Jeffrey Zilke. I hope I pronounced his name right. And the essential question for today is, what do we know about Earth and its neighbors? Make sure that you have your trifold worksheet that I put in your packet with you and ready to go as we read the story. Today, I'm going to read it to you rather than have the computer read it to you. So let's go on to the first page of our story. Okay. Um, as we look at our first page, we see words in green, and it's called Our Home Planet. We see some pictures on this page. We see some captions on this page. Listen as I read on page 242. Have you ever seen this planet before? This is Earth. It is home to you and everyone you know. Billions of people live on this planet. Billions more plants and animals live here too. That makes Earth a special planet. As far as we know, no other planet has living things on it. How does Earth support life when other planets do not? Our planet has everything that creatures need to live. It has water, it has air so that we can breathe. Earth has warmth too. Gases covering the planet hold in heat from the sun. That keeps our planet warm but not too warm. Some planets are much too cold to support life. Others are much too hot. Earth is just the right temperature to support life. We can study Earth in our own backyard, but scientists have also learned about Earth by studying space. They have learned how other planets are different from ours. Learning more about space helps us understand why our planet is one of a kind. Okay, and as we look over here, we see our first picture, and the caption for our first picture says that from space, you can see Earth's blue oceans and brown land. How is our planet different from other planets? Take a minute to think about, they've already talked about it in our text. Think about prior knowledge, your background knowledge, what you know, and also take a look back at what we just read. We have another picture down at the bottom. The caption for that picture says, people enjoy bright sunshine and warm temperatures on a beach. Earth, water, and air make it an ideal place for living things. We have another picture here with another short caption. It says, studying space has allowed us to learn a lot about Earth. Why do we think we have words that are highlighted in yellow? Have we seen those words before? Have we seen the word warmth? Have we seen the word support? Have we seen the word temperature? I hope that you're thinking in your mind that those are the vocabulary words that we went over earlier in the week. Okay, I need you to be on your worksheet and I need you to be under column number one on that worksheet right now because the first question talks about nonfiction text features. And on the two pages that we just read, how many of the following text features are found on page 242 and 243? How many captions do you see on the pages that we just looked at together? Write that number for me, please, by the word captions. How many headings do you see on page 242 and 243? Please write that number next to the word headings. How many pictures do we see on page 242 and 243? Write that number down on your worksheet for me now. 
And then finally, how many new vocabulary words do we see on these pages? And write that number down for me, please. Okay, as we move down to the middle of column one, they want us to bubble in the main idea. So only one of those will be our main idea. What were we reading about? What were most of the sentences about on page 242 and 243? Were most of the sentences on these pages about billions of people living on Earth? If that's what you think the main idea is, then you would fill in that bubble next to that sentence. If you think that the main idea of pages 242 and 243 um, is that Earth is a unique planet with features that support life, then you'll bubble in that sentence for me. Or finally, if you think the main idea of these pages is that Earth has water and air that we can breathe, then that's the one that you are going to bubble in. And remember, you have time to pause this video and you have time to go back and look at our paragraphs again. What do you think the main idea of these two pages was? And then finally, your last question, and again, you can always pause the video. Write down another detail that supports the main idea. So you just identified the main idea in the question before that. What is one detail that you read that supports the main idea that you just filled in the bubble for? Take a minute and write that down. All right, we're going to go ahead and we're going to keep moving on. Again, you can pause this video as many times as you need to to get your work done. Okay, we move on to the next page. And we see number two. We are now on number two in the middle of your page as we're going to look at pages 244 to 247. I'm going to stop reading after page 244 so that we can answer that very, very first question. Okay, and here's our paragraph on page 244. Actually, there's two paragraphs. Excuse me, I made a mistake. Earth shares its neighborhood in space with many other planets. Earth is part of the solar system. The solar system includes the sun and eight planets. It also includes rocks that are called asteroids. And I'm going to stop right there for a second. Do you notice how our author gave the definition of the unfamiliar word asteroids in that same sentence, that's a context clue. He told us what the definition of asteroids was in that sentence, and he said that asteroids are rocks. Okay, let's continue reading. Dwarf planets are part of the solar system too. Dwarf planets are smaller than the eight main planets. And again, he gave us the definition of a dwarf planet in the text that he wrote. The second paragraph, we're right here. The sun lies at the center of the solar system. The planets closest to the sun are Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. These planets are made mostly of solid rock. Scientists call them rocky planets. Okay, and again, if you look at that word rocky, we see a suffix at the end of that, and we know that Y means full of. So rocky is full of rocks. Okay, let's look at that first question on your worksheet. And they want us to bubble the main idea of page 244. So as I read page 244 to you, and you can pause the video and look at it again, what do you think the main idea is? What are all of our sentences about? Is it the first one? The solar system consists of the sun, asteroids, and many planets. If you think that that was the main idea, you'll fill in that bubble. Is it the planet closest to the sun is Mercury? Do you think that that was the main idea? Is that what most of our sentences were about? If you think so, then you will fill in the bubble for the planet closest to the sun is Mercury. Or a third option is dwarf planets are part of the solar system too. Do you think that most of our sentences were about the dwarf planets? Take a second and fill that in for me, please. Okay, now we're going to look at the rest. We have a caption over on this part of our page, and the caption says that this diagram shows planets and objects in our solar system. The asteroid belt and the Kuiper belt are groups of rocky and icy objects. 
And we know that when we have a diagram, it's different than just a picture. When we have a diagram, they're going to label things for us. So they've labeled the sun, they've labeled Mercury and Venus and Earth and Mars. They've put those on our diagram. And then to this side of the diagram, they've labeled Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. They've named the Kuiper Belt. And then finally, way out here, we see the dwarf planet Pluto. Okay, so now this is our next question. It says on pages 244 and 245, we have a diagram of the solar system with the planets labeled. How does having the labels help you? So how did all of our labels help you understand what this diagram was about? Okay, now this one, we need to make sure that we use part of our question in our statement. So our question was, how does having the labels help you? So we need to start our statement with the words, having the labels help us because, write that down for me, please. Having the labels help us because, make sure you're starting with a capital letter. And then tell me, how did those labels help you? And again, I'm going to keep moving on in our story, but you can pause this video and go back as many times as you need to. Okay, so we need to move on to the next pages and we're going to look at just page 246 right now. Okay, and on page 246, this is what it tells us. Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune are called gas giants. They are mostly made of gas. They are the largest planets in the solar system. They are also farthest from the sun. Earth is the largest of the rocky planets. It is the fifth largest planet in the solar system. Earth is nearly 8,000 miles wide or 12,800 kilometers. But our planet is much smaller than the gas giants. More than one thousand Earths could fit inside Jupiter, which is the biggest planet. I think that's a remarkable statement right there. So we think of our planet as being very large. But if we took our Earth and we opened up Jupiter, we could take 1,000 of our planets and plop them inside of Jupiter. And that's how big Jupiter would be. So 1, thousand of our planet earth would fit inside the larger planet jupiter okay and here's our next question it says how is earth different from the gas giant okay look at your question how is earth different from the gas giants take words from your question to start your statement and tell me how the earth is different than the gas giants do that for me now please All right, and now we're going to take just a minute just to enjoy some reading for a minute. We don't have any questions again until we get to page 248. So let's look at page 247. Okay, we look at our caption and it says that this picture shows the eight planets in our solar system. The sun appears on the left and the dwarf planet Pluto is on the right. This picture shows the size of each planet compared to the others. Okay, so again, if you look at our image that they gave us, it's showing each of the sizes of the planets compared to the others. Okay, and now we're going to read down here. Earth is the third planet from the sun. The sun is about 93 million miles or 150 million kilometers away from Earth. To travel that far on Earth, you would have to circle the globe 3,733 times. So you would need to get in your car or get on a plane and you would need to circle our planet 3,733 times. Our caption right here, the sun may be very far from Earth, but its rays warm the planet. 
deserts like the Sahara get very hot. Okay, um, let's move on to page 248. Have your worksheet ready because we're going to be looking at our next question. On page 248, again, we have another diagram at the top. It's different than a picture. And here's our caption. Our caption says that this diagram shows the paths of the rocky planets around the sun. And here's our next picture. And the caption for that one said that the Earth is tilted on its axis as it rotates. It takes 24 hours to complete one rotation. Okay, now this axis is an imaginary line. Okay, notice how the Earth is slanted. And it takes 24 hours for the Earth to spin on its axis. So we know that the Earth is actually doing two movements. The first movement is revolve, and it revolves around the sun. Okay, but it is actually also spinning on its axis at the same time. So if we would think of someone holding a ball and going around someone else, spinning that ball the whole time while it's moving around the other planet or the other person in our room this would be a good example of that. Okay, so this is what it tells us on this page. Each planet follows its own path around the sun. The path is called an orbit. The orbits are a little bit elliptical. And notice how on this page they give us the pronunciation guide to help us pronounce the word elliptical. That means that they are oval-shaped paths. Earth takes a little more than 365 days to orbit the sun. One trip around the sun equals one, one year. And again, notice that they gave us the definition of elliptical in our paragraph. It says that they are oval-shaped paths, and it takes more than 365 days to orbit the sun. Planets also rotate as they travel. They spin around like a top. Each planet rotates around its axis. An axis is an imaginary line that runs through the center of the planet from top to bottom. Earth's axis is tilted. So Earth leans to one side as it spins. It rotates all the way around in 24 hours. That is exactly one day. And as we look at that again, always be aware of the context clues that your author is giving you. He's helping you identify unfamiliar words. He's giving you pronunciation guides to help you pronounce those words. He's splitting those words up into syllables for you. So as you read, don't just read the words. Make sure that you are listening to what the author is telling you. You are looking for and listening for those context clues that he gives you. Okay, um, so on page 249, it's called Earth's Closest Neighbor. Everyone knows about Earth's closest neighbor. We see it in the sky almost every night. It is the moon. The moon is much smaller than Earth. It is about 2,160 miles wide, or 3,475 kilometers wide. About 50 moons would fit inside the Earth. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. Remember we said that 1,000 Earths would fit inside the planet Jupiter. Well, the moon is small enough so that we were, if we were to open up the Earth like a can, we could fit 50 moons inside of the Earth. That gives us a visualization of just how small the moon is. Our moon orbits Earth, just as Earth orbits the sun. The moon takes about 27 days to travel around the Earth. Like our planet, the moon also rotates, but it rotates much more slowly than Earth. The moon takes a little more than 27 days to turn all the way around. Since it travels around the Earth in the same amount of time, the same side of the moon always faces us. And here's our caption. The moon looks small when shown side by side with the Earth. It is actually much farther from Earth than shown here. Okay, so again, let's go back to this paragraph right here. Our moon orbits Earth, just as Earth orbits the sun. So we talked about the Earth going around the sun. 
Well, the moon does the same thing. It goes around our planet Earth, and it takes 27 days to do that. But then when we look at this paragraph, we talked about how we know that the Earth revolves and rotates. Well, the moon does the same thing, and that's what this paragraph is talking about right here. It's talking about the moon also rotates, but it rotates much more slowly than the Earth. It takes a little more than 27 days to turn around. Okay, and so when we think of what these two paragraphs are talking about, and we think about what we see in the sky at night when we're looking at the moon, those are called our phases. And the phases of the moon, what we see of the moon at night, is because of the two paragraphs that we just read. Okay, let's go on and let's look at our worksheet now. We're on number three on our worksheet. Okay, looking at pages 248 and 249, they want you to put a check if you find the following text features on these pages. So if we see captions on page 248 and 249, they want you to put a check mark. You don't need to count those this time. Just put a check mark if you see those. Right below that, we see pictures. If you see pictures on these pages, please put a check mark there. If you see a diagram or diagrams on pages 248 and 249, put a check mark for me, please. Do you see a heading on these two pages? If so, put a check mark. Do you see new vocabulary words? And finally, do you see labels? So look carefully at those two pages and put a check mark next to each text feature that you see. Okay, and then they want us to go back to this paragraph again. They want us to reread the second paragraph so that we can find out what the, the main idea is and what the supporting details are. So I'm gonna go back and I'm going to read this again. And as I read this to you again, be listening and be watching. What do you think the main idea of this second paragraph is? Planets also rotate as they travel. They spin around like a top. Each planet rotates around its axis. An axis is an imaginary line that runs through the center of the planet from the top to the bottom. Earth's axis is tilted, so Earth leans to one side as it spins. It rotates all the way around in 24 hours. That's exactly one day. Now remember, the main idea is what most of the sentences will be about. So it says, what is the main idea? On your page, make sure that you're starting with words from your question. So the question is, what is the main idea? You need to start. The main idea is, and tell me, what was the main idea from this second paragraph? And then you're going to move down. What is the first supporting detail? So you'll write down what all of our sentences are about, and then you'll go further down into the paragraph and you're going to find the first supporting detail, a sentence that tells you about your main idea. And then you'll go to the bottom of your page and you will write your second supporting detail. And again, you'll be able to pause this video and you will be able to go back as many times as you need to to read that paragraph. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the next page. Now we are on, and you need to turn your, your trifold over, because now we're looking at pages 250 and 251. And they want us to do the same thing with this first paragraph on page 250. They want us to listen for and to find the main idea. And then they want us to give us the first supporting detail and the second supporting detail. So listen as I read this paragraph. From night to night, the moon seems to change shape. Sometimes we can see the full moon. Other times it looks as if it has been cut in half. The moon's shape seems to change just a little each night. Over about one month, it grows into a full moon and then gets smaller and disappears again. So these are called the phases of the moon over 28 days. And here's our caption. The moon seems to grow bigger until half of its round shape shows. 
and that's going to be in the top row left to right. So it keeps getting, we see a little bit, we see a little bit more, we see a little bit more. Okay, and then finally at this last one, we see half of that. Okay, and because it's getting bigger, I'm going to throw in another word for you. That we say that it is, um, when it's getting bigger, we say that it is waxing. Okay, think of when a wax candle drips and that pile of wax gets bigger and bigger. Okay, so we say that it is waxing. The next part, this is called the moon's first quarter. It grows larger until we see the full moon. The full moon shines for a night or two. Then it looks a smaller, it looks smaller bit by bit until we see the last quarter. Finally, the crescent disappears into a new moon. Okay, so we see how we see half of the moon. Now we see more than half, a little bit more, a little bit more. And then finally, we see that complete full moon. And we're going to see it for a day or two that they said in our caption. And then if we look, it goes away a little bit here. It gets a little bit smaller here. It gets a little bit smaller here until finally we don't see that anymore. We call this phase of the moon a full moon. We call this phase down here where we can't see it. We call that a new moon because it's starting all over again. Okay. And just like we said that this was called waxing up at the top, that it's getting bigger. As it starts to get smaller, as we see less and less of that, that's called waning. The moon is waning. We're seeing less and less. Um, I challenge you to look up at the sky at night. And an easy way to remember our quarters, because in third grade, we usually talk about the new moon. We talk about the full moon. We talk about the first quarter moon. And we talk about the last quarter moon. Okay. If we see the lighted side of the moon to our left, we know that it is in our its last quarter. So the lighted side of the moon is on our left in this picture. So we would say that that would be a last quarter moon. If it is to the right, like up here, we're seeing the lighted side to our right. Okay, so that is a first quarter. That means it's going to eventually just get bigger. So this is the first quarter. But if the light is on the left, it's last. Lots of L's. Lighted on the left is last. Okay, so now they want us to look at this paragraph again. What do you think the main idea of that paragraph was? So again, what is the main idea? We need to start our sentence with the main idea is. And then you need to give me one supporting detail. And then you need to give me the second supporting detail. And I'm going to let you pause this video in just a few minutes. So we're going to go ahead and continue on. We have page 251. Here's our first picture with our caption. The moon is closer to Earth than any planets are, but it is still far away. We see only parts of the moon that are lit by the sun. As the moon travels around Earth, sunlight hits the moon from different directions. When it hits the side of the moon facing Earth, we see a full moon. If it mostly lights the side facing away from Earth, we only see a sliver. The moon may not seem far away, but it is very far. Our moon is 238,855 miles or 384,400 kilometers from the Earth. Imagine you could drive from Earth to the moon in a car going 50 miles or 80 kilometers per hour. It would take nearly 200 days of non-stop driving to get there. So that means you couldn't stop to grab a bite to eat, you couldn't stop to go to sleep, you couldn't stop to stretch your legs, you would just have to keep driving. Okay, and they want us to reread that. I'm going to let you reread that. And why does the moon seem to change shape? And again, you want to make sure you use words from the question in your statement. So why does the moon seem to change shape? The moon seems to change shape because. And we are going to finish up our story. And we have a diagram to look at on pages 252 and 253 we have a compare and contrast diagram 
So they want us to use a Venn diagram to help with that. All right. And I think I want one too many pages. There we go. Once you reached the moon, what would you see? The moon's surface is mostly gray rocks and dirt. You would see more mountains and many deep valleys. You would also see many craters. Craters are bowl-shaped bowl pits in the surface. Some craters are just a few miles wide. The largest ones are more than 1,000 miles wide. Craters are formed when rocks or ice from space slam into the moon's surface. These objects are called meteorites and comets. What else would you notice? There is no life on the moon. The moon almost has no atmosphere, so there is no air to breathe. Without an atmosphere, nothing protects the moon from the sun's heat. Nothing holds in any of the sun's warmth either. So the moon gets very hot and very cold. Sunny parts of the moon get as hot as 253 degrees Fahrenheit. Now we think it's hot and we go swimming when it's in the 90 degree Fahrenheit or the 100 degree Fahrenheit. Other places get as cold as 300 minus 387 degrees Fahrenheit. And you think we don't even go outside at recess if it's below freezing and freezing is 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Look up at the night sky. Can you see the moon, our nearest neighbor in space? The sun and the planets are out there too. Even if you can't see them now, look down at the ground. That's Earth. That's our home planet. We are all part of the solar system. Okay, so now this is what they want you to do on your Venn diagram. They want you to compare the Earth to the moon. So will you see the word Earth? Tell me things about the Earth that are different from the moon. When you see the word moon, tell me things about the moon that are different from the Earth. When you see the space in the middle, tell me how the Earth and the moon are the same. And finally, your last question is what is the author's, author's purpose? Did the author write this story to persuade us, to inform us, or to entertain us? Okay, now we went through those questions fairly quickly. So remember, you can watch this video and go back to the story and reread it on your own. So finish up your worksheet for me and have a great day.